So today, uh, Andres is going to lead us in the discussion of the theory for chapter two. But then we're going to have some time for the next session to do some exercises, applying that theory of the chapter two, that theory to uh, those uh, you know, practical exercises, which is something that I believe, at least in my experience, the previous cohort, it was good because you could see certain, uh, you know, a certain, certain, uh, 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 let's say situations, okay? It could be obstacles, but situations that you could uh, be presented that then you have to see how you, you know, how, how do you jump? You know, how do you overcome those obstacles? And that's part of the data science of, 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 of or, or any job, uh, you know, in mind. Okay, so um, one other thing, uh, because I had some time this week, uh, you will see that the book, the author has, uh, you know, some libraries that he uses, okay, for dealing with time series. But there's other libraries in R that have been, you know, that have been prepared to also make it easier for you to you know, deal with time series. So one of the exercises that I did before, I introduced one of those libraries. It's called Time Tech, okay? And that library, uh, Time Tech, uh, is with them, sorry. Uh, I'm getting a little bit rusty here. Time tech. So if you do a search R time tech cram, it will give you the you know the library, etc. Uh, that library is very good for manipulating uh, the time series. As you will see, uh, let's say that you have a time series that is in the the, the least frequency, the, the the least frequency is in hours, and you have to convert it to days, to daily. So that that library makes it easier. Also, there's a, there's a procedure, uh, you know, that the author gave us to do that. Okay. So you can, you know, you, you can choose which way, you know, you want to attack this problem, but at, at least time tech is more tidyverse. Okay. It's more, you know, uh, it's more ingrained into the tidyverse and tidy models. Okay. So let's see. I'm just, you know, Get, get, getting a couple of points before uh, starting. Uh, probably Abdul will join us later. So Andres, if you want to begin, you know, uh, the, floor, the floor is yours. <laughs> Perfect, yes, absolutely, sure. Let me try to, I mean, you, you would think at this point, we've been at this for so long that everyone would be an expert, but let me try to remember how to share my screen. Um, or share the right screen at least. Uh, is that working at all? I, I can see it. I can see it. You can't see it? No. So I okay. think I can use it. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. If you can just zoom in a bit, uh, that would be better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. So, Hi. Hi, Abdu. Yeah. We're just, we're just starting. So, yeah. Perfect timing. Just in time. Just in time, Nabu. We just started right <laughs> now. Yeah, thank Very you. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So, we are, um, we will be going over uh, chapter two today, as uh, Ricardo mentioned. Um, I've got a couple house keeping items that I put there on the slide, but that is, I, I guess, just to have the links and if this gets pushed eventually, it's just sign up sheet, um, uh, the book club notes. So these notes and the uh, reminder that this, the book that we were using is the third edition because um, I think that there's, uh, it's, easy, it's easier, I believe, to find, to Google, to find, to get through Google to the second edition. Um, and then Ricardo, you also mentioned that there are a few packages uh, that the author uses, but one of them is, is the package for this book and all the examples 
all the data, uh, and I'm guessing the exercises as well, um, are part of this FPP3 package. So um, with that, so uh, the learning objectives objectives for today. So first of all, the Sybil object, um, which is similar to Tibble object. We'll talk about it in a minute. And we'll talk about some uh, time plots, which is the first step, as we all know, in data analysis, usually the first step is uh, just look at your data, plot your data, see what it looks like. So that's the same that applies as well to uh, time series analysis and uh, time plots is, I guess, is the first step uh, in that path. Um, and then we'll go through some of the characteristics of those time, time plots and some of the patterns that we see uh, in our data um, and how to, yeah, how, how these, how the stellus um, different behaviors uh, of, or, or the different characteristics of the data that we're looking at at a, uh, at a given point. So let's begin with, um, well, with Sybil, the tidy time series. So uh, the book introduces the, the object uh, the Sybil objects, which is, uh, I guess, the equivalent of uh, Tibbles, um, but uh, um, the Tibbal data frame, a tidy data frame, but um, for a time series. So the idea is that this is a, a tidy uh, data frame. So it, it, it um, operates in the same way that a Tibble data frame operates in a, within uh, tidy vars, and uh, except that it, it it has an additional component, which is the time component. So um, the, the one, one of the, well, I suppose the, the, the advantage of it this being a tidy um, or fitting within the tidy uh, or I'll, I'll behave under the tidy data principles is that uh, is that it plays nicely with dplyr, for example, so you can select, mutate, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the, the, the main difference is that um, each observation is, is uniquely identified by an index and a key. So the index is what gives us the time component. It's what holds that, uh, holds the time component of each of, of these observations. Um, and then the, the key is uh, what defines, is, is, are the variables. So it can be more than one. I think it's, a, it's one important thing to notice that, that defined each one of those units over time. So, um, so let me, uh, so let me explain. For example, um, one if we talk about uh, GDP data, for example. So if we talk about the yearly GDP data, then the index would be the year. That's uh, what it tells us the 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 frequency um, of the of the series, and then one. Possible key, for example, would be countries. So we, if we have a uh, GDP data for say the USA or the UK, well, our key would be countries. And then um, the, the other, um, I guess the, the other important thing to notice here is that one Sybil can contain more than one data series. If we think about if we think about that the example I just uh, I just gave so GDP data for USA or UK because we have that that um, key that tells us what the what the uh, country is, then each country has its own data series. So each country is identified by the index yearly uh, data and by the key their country um, ID or their country name, say. Um, 
the civil package also so the civil package also includes some some uh, interesting functions that, that are, uh, allow us to to manipulate the data series so we can control the, the interval over the ind index there are some examples that I've, I've included a link there to the the um, website or the package site of the of, uh, of Sybil, but uh, it lets us change the frequency, change the, uh, it, let, it allows us, there are some functions to gap fill. Um, as far as I could see, the, the methodology to, to gap fill isn't very complex. It's, it's just imputing data or just, yeah, just carrying over uh, the most recently observed data point, for example, into the, uh, until the end of the series. So um, there are always much more uh, sophisticated ways to gap fill. I think that that's um, inevitably in all types of data analysis, how to gap fill or how to deal with missing data is uh, an endless discussion. But it's important to point out that this, this uh, package has a function that, uh, with which we can um, get gap fill. And then um, it, uh, the, the other thing is that it, uh, it automatically detects uh, seasonal periods. So not one another characteristic of uh, the, tip, the Sybil package or Sybil uh, data frames. Um, one other key function, uh, before I forget, is the, so it's essentially the equivalent of, the, of group by, it's called, and it's index by. So when you want to collapse to summarize, for example, you use index by, um, uh, and that, that it allows you to work the same way, just you're collapsing your data if you want to do some um, aggregate um, analysis. Uh, so yeah, the, the, there's the information to the civil package. It's, uh, yeah, it's what the majority of the book is based upon. Um, Andres, I just have one yeah. comment. Yeah. Okay, uh, and very nice discussion of the Sybil uh, object because uh, usually you will only find a Sybil object when you are dealing with time series. Mm -hmm. If you are dealing with tabular data, uh, you won't see this because you, know, you, you don't need it, okay? But regarding about how you want to approach this, what I was telling about the time tech uh, a library, time tech package is that you don't have to learn another object like Sybil to work with time series. In other words, you can work with tables, which are very common in the tidyverse. And then what you do is that you do the uh, normal, uh, traditional uh, selects, group by, summarize functions of the plier within the time series, okay? So one of the things that we're going to do in the exercise when we come back, you know, next year, is that I had the time to work out a problem as the author, you know, uh, uh, you know, teaches us with a civil object and then the same, the same approach, but with a time tech, with a table object. And eventually you can choose, you know, which one, you know, you want to work. But in my case, I prefer to work with an object that I'm familiar with. Sybil is something that is kind of new, right? You know, with the index and the keys and et cetera. And there's some value there. I, I, I don't mean, you know, to, you know, le lessen it. There's some value there, but you have to learn other object, okay? Um, so sometimes, you know, you want to standardize your way of, you know, doing the functions and doing, you know, using the dplyr. So the time tech library lets you, because it has the same functions, lets you use those traditional dplyr functions to manipulate those time series. And I found that a little more intuitive, okay? I, I think it's a very good point. It's, uh, uh, I think that the, the, in general, when you're working with R, the, the more packages you start to add, uh, and of course, I'm sure that this is a, this is a package that is very, very, current and constantly maintained and I'm sure that uh, the author is yeah um, yeah maintaining it uh, regularly but 
you you when you, you when you add more packages you all, all also right. add the risk that something at some point will break right or the changes or that your your code breaks because someone make made a change that you did not expect or doesn't play nicely with other so i think it's a very good point is that if you can do things without having to add new packages especially learning new things then um, correct it's always, a, and, it's always and, a and also uh, and also another thing is that 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 package is a family it's a family of different packages mm -hmm. okay there's time tech there's model time etc mm -hmm. and there's another benefit is that the model time that works with time tech and works with the tidy models and tidy verse it gives you more variety more choices on the modeling because this book is more a foundational. In other words, you're learning the basics. It's like learning basic statistics, okay? You're going to learn the basics, and then from here, then you're going to add up. So what, what I see that the benefit of this is to understand very well the time series, okay? Understand that the accessible, path, accessible object, I wouldn't use it, you know, I will use the table because I'm more familiar with it, but then, I will use the other packages that come with time tech because that gives me more variety and more power in the modeling. For example, you'll see that this book uh, gives you exponential smoothing, gives you uh, uh, ARIMA, et cetera. The problem with those algorithms is that they don't scale too well. In other words, when you have several products that you have to forecast each of them individually, Arima and exponential smoothing is not the way to go. Okay, you have to use other type of techniques. Okay, and try to choose the best model from a variety of models. Time tech and model time are from the ground up. They were developed, you know, to 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 address that. This this kind of uh, of of uh, time series of packages is more for individual. When you are, for example, when you are studying GDP, uh, econometrics, okay? Or something that is has, you know, a couple of time series, that's fine. But when we're dealing with multi, multi, multiple time series, for example, the Walmart uh, forecasting uh, competition, the M5 competition, there were 100,000 uh, uh, products in different stores and et cetera, then, you know, this, this won't help. <laughs> this won't help you. You have to go, you know, a different, different direction. Okay, so just to make sure that we understand you know, what, what is the utility and what's the benefit of studying this particular textbook, because it's going to be a foundation for the next step. Yeah, absolutely. Makes sense. Uh, uh, thanks. Um, so yeah, and uh, similarly, and I mean, we can keep discussing this, but um, we're not. <laughs> but uh, the other thing I, I found interesting when I started reading about uh, reading Sybil. Um, maybe you can share your your, your guys as you, Federica uh, and Abdul, uh, your your thoughts. But when they started, uh, when I think of tidy, right, of tidy data, it's you know one observation. What so so you get one observation. So I think of it as just that of, 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 of just that particular cross of one and one. Right. If you think about it, if you're looking at your long data, but if they, in this case, when they start they start adding the key, the idea of key, you know, I almost felt like they're mixing data sets, or or they're or they're or they're trying to force this package is trying to force data, trying to be tidy in that it's a long data set, but trying to force it into a wide long data set. Does that make sense at all? You know what I mean? Is that is that um you know it's like they're adding an extra column for the no uh, and, and you have a point andres uh precisely if you want to pivot mm -hmm. at table uh you cannot do it as you would do a table okay mm -hmm. because the table is already you know if you if you have the correct you know format the correct cleaning for that table you have one observation per row and one value per column so when you go to the pivot a uh, longer pivot wider, you already, you know, have that embedded. With a symbol, uh, I don't think you can do it. Okay, because the symbol, because of the 
intermix between the index and the keys and this if there are multiple keys okay there's going to be some repetition you know in in in, in a couple of columns so we we have to, you have to do some manipulation there yeah. and i know because i tried to do it <laughs> in one of the in one of the exercises i had to do it uh, it, it didn't work it didn't work i had to use the index by every, everything to you know conform mm. it to that format and then uh, do the do the plot okay yeah, because yeah. remember we're using ggplot right you know yeah, for the, for the plot. you know it's it's, it's, it's uh, the, the functions are based on ggplot ggplot requires a long format okay a, a long format for your for 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 you know uh, to right. to express the, the 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 aesthetics and also the colors and the groups and everything so the problem is that if you don't have it in that format, uh, long format, then you're going to have a problem. Okay, you, you, ggplot is not going to it's not going to work. So you have to transform it. The good thing about working with tables is that those functions that that the, those declarer functions work very well. Okay, they are already they are already uh, developed so they can work you know perfectly with it, with, with your data. So yeah, it's a it's it's a, it's a good point that you're bringing, uh, Andres, in terms of you know the quirks of this this object as uh, simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It almost feels like it's an it's a yeah it's tidy data, but with, I mean it is tidy, little, not, but not as tidy as but yeah. Yeah, but it's not. tidy in terms of observation, but sometimes it's not tidy in terms of the column. Yeah, it's like tidy okay? with an. So you have to pair the, the things that you have to pair. You know th those keys to make it to make it tidy. Right. Okay, to make it tidy because you know there's going to be some repetition. Uh, yep. there yeah 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 thanks uh all right so let's go into time series graphics or time and so again like i said at the beginning the, the first step in data analysis in general is to plot your data to see to try to identify patterns to see if there are any outliers to see if there are any uh dramatic changes or there are any relationships etc cetera, etc cetera. um and of course, the, the uh, type of chart that we pick is depend, depends on the type of, of data that we are looking at. So in, the time, in, the, in, the, in terms of, uh, in the case of a uh, time series, um, we are, we're looking at uh, a list of observations, a list of numbers with information embedded uh, about when those observations were recorded. Right when those particular events took place, so that's why there is a time temporal component to them. Um, in the case of Sybil, that's what the index would indicate. But uh, in, so the most basic plot, the most elemental plot, is the 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 I um, see how observations is move against time. So just your observations against against time. Essentially, and this this plot right here is a, it comes from the package from the books package, the FPPP FPP three uh, package, and it's uh, it shows the um, airline uh, number of passengers uh, in the onset airlines economy class from Melbourne to Sydney um, weekly between uh, 1980. I believe, and here's the here's the code. Um, like, like, like I can't remember, but uh, mid '80s until mid '90s by week, and you can see some. Uh, you can start just by plotting these data. You can start seeing some of the ways in which it, it behaves, and we, we'll go more into the particularities of these of the uh, time data, but uh, time series. But you can already start seeing some of those uh peaks and and, and troughs of uh, of the data and and when you first when i first look at this chart um i start asking myself questions right like what happened and at uh, what is this 1989 i guess what happened there what, why why that sudden drop uh is it because the airplanes were grounded or is it because the the something happened in particular, or is it just that the data are missing, right? So those are the types of questions that one one begins to ask. The other question is uh, right at, uh, over here. Uh, can you see the cursor? Can you see the my my cursor? Yeah, right here. 
So why why this peak? Why why the sudden? Is it because so we we start just by looking at the data without any doing any other analysis? We're gonna really start asking ourselves questions, right? Are there other competitors? Is it because uh, suddenly nobody else was flying and just them, or is it because there was a sudden uh, something was happening in Sydney at this point, um, et cetera, et cetera? So those are the kinds of questions that uh, that we can ask. And same same here. So, but we can also see some, and like I said, we'll look at it. Some some kind of you can see this sign like behavior of the of the curve, and it, even though it's not super evident and Human brains are are wired to detect patterns very often where there are none. But you still see them. It's still good to to it's, to try and, and and at least formulate some of these questions. Ask uh, start asking questions that we can um, answer uh, by looking by diving into the data. But at least where where we have a starting point, and we can be completely off or not. But at least there is that. So. Um, the civil package has the this auto plot function. That's what I used to to create this chart. Um, and and the data set and set is part of the fifty three cat uh, package. This is the code for that about. I think I changed the theme, but otherwise it's just, it's this is the the code. Uh, all right. So, like I mentioned, patterns. Um, so there are three, the, the book talks about three types of patterns. So we have your trend, which is your long-term increase or decrease in, in the data. So I, can, I, I thought of two examples that we can discuss. Uh, so we can look at house prices over time, or we can look at asset prices over time. So um, we know uh, and and that housing prices change or, or that have seasonal behavior. For example, we know that they that uh, yeah in the spring there are more there's more more supply of houses or we we can observe those things. But if we plot a very long series, and we'll look at that at one in a minute. Um, even with those behaviors, with those signs, we can still detect whether the series is trending up or is it or, or it's straight trending down um so i thought that would be it would be interesting to talk about inflation just because i think that's the one of the hottest topics right now and uh, well not just here in the united states but in europe it's uh, it's skyrocket it has skyrocketed uh one could argue that it has peaked or not etc cetera, etc cetera, but um Here's a chart. Uh, oops, yeah, no, that's it. That's what I want. So here's a chart of um, a inflation in the United States since before the sixties. So is this this is, I mean, you can see this is the CPI. This is the consumer price index, and of course, there, there, it, there are other underlying things at work in, in terms of how it is calculated, what goes in it, whether there are changes or the calculations change or not, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I just thought it, it would be an interesting um, chart because if you look at say now or or in the five last five years. One could argue, well, this is a series. If you look at it from 2018 until right now, well, this is a series that has been stable, right? Until until 2021, and then it just spiked, right? But then if you look at it in the last 10 years, well, you start to see that trend. And if you look at it 25 years, well, even more, right? So time series i guess, I guess uh, or, or trends depend also not not just on, on the well depend also on the on your on how long your time series is right um so in this case yeah we can see that there is a definite change in the trend right in the last uh 2 years but the trend has been going up right um so yeah that i thought that was an interesting example 
So we have um, seasonality. So we talked about this a little bit. The time series are affected by seasonal factors like the time time of the year. Um, so examples of that are the consumption of natural gas, right? And that's a big thing in Europe right now. Federico, I'm sure you're quite familiar with that. Is that you know, the colder it gets, the 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 more people are going to use gas to warm up their homes and uh, yeah, and pr price usually behaves according to demand and if storage isn't enough and we can go into the, all, 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 all sorts of things into that, but just <laughs> um, it's one is yet one other of those, uh, it, it, it's a series that shows seasonal behavior. Um, same with the airline ticket prices. Uh, well, there's a typo there, sorry, but airline airline ticket prices. So in, you know, do they change, they change depending on the season? If you try to buy a ticket before here in the US before Thanksgiving, or I guess in general before um, uh, the holidays, Christmas, et cetera, well, prices are going to be much higher than if you try to fly uh, to, um, I don't know, somewhere cold in February. I'm sure that you could get a, probably a, a cheaper ticket to, I don't know, Iceland in February uh, or Norway. I don't know. And then the last one is the cyclic or cyclical is how I, they call it cyclic in the, in the book, but I, I always thought of it, it was cyclical. Um, and this is when, when data show rises and falls, you know, like this, this, you can detect that pattern but the pattern is not um, attached to, or doesn't repeat itself at a fixed uh, frequency. So in, in the case of a seasonal series, you know that uh, airplane, airplane tickets to the Caribbean are going to be higher when it's cold from the United States, when it's cold in the United States, to give you an example. You know when that is going to happen or in yeah, natural gas consumption in, in, in Europe is going to be higher in the colder months. In, in this case, it ha the, you have that, that, those changes, those patterns, but doesn't necessarily uh, conform to a, an exact, you cannot pinpoint when it is exactly that it's going to happen. So this is one such example is the uh, family homes uh, for sale in the United States. So you can see those patterns, but there isn't really, um, you can't really, really pinpoint when it is going to happen. And this is one, one of the reasons why um, housing prices are generally one of the indicators, the, the, the leading indicators, I don't know if really is leading or more coincident, but it's one of the leading indicators of uh, um, recessions. You can, um, but I don't think, I mean, the, the common joke amongst economists is that uh, economists are, the, uh, they have been able to accurately pinpoint or forecast uh, 20 recessions out of the last uh, 10. So, you know, it's, uh, it's impossible. Nobody can really say when it, when it happens and same with this, but they know when it's going to, they know when it's going to happen. Um, yeah. Uh, and then, all right, so that, let's let's talk about how to see these uh, these um, phenomena. So again, the book has some some um, data sets that we that I used um, for uh, for these slides. To and one of them is electricity demand in Victoria and Australia. So this is a chart. Oh, so seasonal plots. The difference with, with uh, between a seasonal a seasonal plot and a regular time series plot is that you essentially break out the data according to um, the year, say. So if you want to see uh, the, so essentially, say say you had a long series between 1990 and 2000, right? but you want to see how those data behave uh, each year. So what you do is you break out the series year by year 
and then you plot those years one on top of the other. And this is what we see here, right? So we see how the, each one of those years or each one of those uh, subsets of the series behave and we can compare, right? So um, this, uh, like I said, is the electricity demand. This is another example. And this is, this is a, um, a broad seasonal pattern, is I think what I call it. So it's just, you, um, this is kind of a, 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 broad, a longer subset. So you can see um, a kind of the broad behavior, but you can make each of those subsets, those breaks that I talked about, smaller. So in this case, for example, this is weekly. And you can see that it's, it looks a little bit noisier, but you can still see those patterns and you can see the behavior of the, um, how, how, it, how these series overlap, uh, you know, even though, even though there can be a little bit more volatility or you can still see it, uh, see how they behave. Um, and then uh, this, this one didn't. Uh, just a yeah. comment from previous uh, uh, plot. Uh, I have seen that, for example, for energy consumption, uh, one of the variables, especially in you know extreme latitudes, for example, you know, a country in uh, latitude fifty or uh, northern or southern, uh, because they have you know this extreme uh, fluctuations in temperature, in average temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes what I see is that they plot. The, the electricity demand or the natural gas consumption, et cetera, and also add that average temperature, okay? Yeah. So if you can see the, you know, the correlation, right, between, you know, your, your variable that you're going to study and then that, you know, that regressor, right, right? the temperature. So I, I don't remember exactly where Victoria is because this is in Australia, yeah, but no, I believe yeah. Victoria is in the, you know, in the Southern part, you know, basically the southern part of the, of the, of the, you know, of, of that subcontinent. So probably they have, apparently, from the electricity demand, apparently they have some fluctuations that could be, could be related to uh, average temperature, okay? Because as you can see, for example, in January, they have these big spikes, right? Or just the demand, maybe when, you know, it gets colder. And then in July, it, they have also, not that big spike, but also, you know, like, like a bump, right? A big bump, because in July, uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking northern, in southern hemisphere, the pattern is reversed. In July, you have the colder uh, season, and then in January and, the, and December, that's the summer, in 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 Australia. So I believe that that's what we're seeing here, that because of the fluctuations in temperature. There's a fluctuation in the electricity uh, uh, demand, but that would be interesting, you know, to see, you know, if we could add, you know, if we could add that uh, uh, that data of average pattern in Victoria within that 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 time frame. Absolutely, I'm trying. I'm 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 trying to find one of those. So I know exactly which chart you're talking about, but unfortunately, I'm not. I'm not. I don't have my terminal here. But let me see if right. I can find it. But yeah, I know. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it shows you <laughs> where yeah, how what the capacity of uh, or the average filling, and it gives you 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 can also have a ribbon or a band or where the average has been in the last Correct. five years and where where you are in this year. And I'm trying to find it. Maybe we can, maybe I can find it in a minute. But if not, well, uh, what what which one? Oh, here's mm, no, maybe. Something like this, but it's not, this is not exactly what we're looking at, but um, can you see this chart? Uh, yes, yeah. I can see it. Yeah. Yep. yeah, so I don't know if this is exactly what we're looking at, but see, you have the bands of what the maximum is, what the minimum is, and where 2021 mm -hmm. fit within those, within those bands right. and where 2022 fits within those bands. So this is imports, but, but, but this is a uh, similar similar to what we mm -hmm. you were just you were just mentioned mentioning but yeah i agree with you it would be interesting to 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 see if we can we can play with these data um uh, and yeah maybe maybe i mean 
I don't know if, if how we can talk about that later uh, once we're done with it. With this, it we, how I mean, some 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 food for thought, you know. You know. Yeah, what no, we no, are no, what, right. No, great. what I was going to say is that, and maybe because there's few that there's few of us, maybe we can we can. It's it's easier to ha have the discussion. How closely we want to 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 remain to the book in terms of the data that are in the book in terms of the package, as you mentioned, that, that the book uses when it comes to the exercises, right? So if, if, if in right. January, when we talk about the exercises of these charts, maybe we, I can find other data sets or we can play around with other things and send them um, out to the group in advance so you can play with them and um, sure. kind of do a maybe a tidy Tuesday kind of thing <laughs> for this group. <laughs> I mean, from, from experience, the the you know the the data says that the books for advice are good are, yeah. are, are, are really good because they're, they're very sure, sure, sure. about, about different you know I, uh, production items uh, from mm -hmm. australia they talk about uh, tourism for example they talk about electricity demand uh i, I mean they're, they're you know from e, e, uh, from very different industries so that gives you more a landscape of what kind of problem you could face you know, if you are doing this, you know, in the in the real world, okay. But uh, you know, just just talking about this, you know, it just you know, came to my mind that maybe that average temperature uh, data could be uh, something to investigate. That could be uh, the one of the one of the co causal uh, relationships that we could investigate in this. Uh, as many other things, for example, in retail, you could investigate about the holidays, uh, certain events, etc. It, it, it depends on the what kind of time series you know you have. Um, yeah, definitely. So we'll we'll look at we'll look at uh, those exercises and when we're back from from the break. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, this 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 uh, chart didn't render, but I'll show it to you in a minute. But uh, so the the last type of uh, um sub series i guess that the or a type of plot that the book discusses is called a seasonal sub series and this is a different type of plot of plot and, and the only difference is that in in instead of plotting one of the instead of plotting each uh, one of the subsets if you want to call them that or on top of the other what it does is it kind of facets them and plots them side by side. So this is what it looks like. Uh, there you go. Oops. Yeah. So this is an example of, uh, sorry, of it. Right, so you see how there's many different little plots one next to the other. Uh, and then in this case, you have the mean of each month. Um, and it's just another way to, to see how to, or to emphasize how these patterns behave. Um, there's a few examples here. This is the one that, that I uh, wanted to show. Uh, this one, uh, it just, instead of faceting, it's still plotting in, in, on, plots on the same um, uh, plane. But the difference is that you have different series for each one of the set of the of the regions. I don't know what they're called in in, in Australia, but uh, um, so yeah. So in essence, these are these are the types of uh, uh, of graph um, of graphic um, uh, yeah of graph of graphs of type series of plots for type series. Um, yeah, well, that's that that's that's my presentation. So I don't know if we want to discuss uh, or uh, whether, uh, yeah, from what you guys think. Of your... so thanks. Thank you. Um, I'd like just to add a few, few things, like uh, that when you look at the trends, you need to uh, think about what's happening around. So, like the environment, the um, social, uh, political situations, like wars, <laughs> or 
uh, so many many things can uh, be influencing the uh, the trend. So um, uh, even infectious diseases. So major events that afflict a, a country that would be able to uh, change the, the the trend completely. So increase. The, um, um, in a greater manner than than the usual, than expected. So that's why it's it's like difficult to like forecast uh, a, a trend. And uh, the the best way to do this is considering what's the what's the the situation of the country is. Um, considering um, the 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 major events that can uh, arise because of um, I don't know many things, but the 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 the, the majority of uh, the reason for which the, those greatest uh, changes happen are are because of war, because of uh, conflicts, because of uh, uh, even even the climate change somehow, but the climate change it's. Uh, so if 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 a, uh, a major event can happen, uh, so that, that that might be influencing the trend. But uh, something that um, is changing slowly along the time that does doesn't um, is not able to release that peak. So even socioeconomical events, so like. Um, so the, all, all all those those things are very important and get inside the investigation. And I I think that 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 would be like, if not it's one of idea. the first yeah. I guess, yeah one of the first points to think about before than any others. Um, so. No, it's a it's a super good point. And uh, yeah, it's also it's also interesting how uh, in many cases it's never just one thing, right? Like if you think about what's happening right now, well, there is the war, of course, that's changed the world, but uh, but there was also COVID right before that. And then the question is, well, is, is, did one? I don't know if trigger is the right word, but did you know what did covid set the stage for war to happen does it have to do with i mean all these things are, are interrelated so that as you say that makes the the, the idea of forecasting uh or the, the yeah the job of forecasting very very difficult and in the end and i guess we'll talk about that at some point uh ricardo can can can, can tell us of course but um it's also there's also the idea that even if you see these trends these seasonal trends these things that repeat themselves um they can kind of give you an idea of where things are going to land but you're never going to be able to pinpoint exactly you know even if you know that in december not that prices of gas are going to go up you know you can never tell exactly where, where, where that, what that up means i'm sure that up this year is not what it was a year ago um in germany for example right or so there are all these things so in the end trying to forecast and i suppose that has to do also with like how sensitive you want your model to be it's kind of it's kind of a a bet right like all you can do is like look at the distribution of where most of these observations are going to land and then try to get within you know those Outside of those tails, but knowing that those tails can, you can, I mean, you can always fall inside those tails and yeah. your forecast will be way off, right? So I guess that's an uh, interesting point. Yeah, that, that, that's why, you know, in chapter one, remember at the end that the author reminds us that, if, uh, you know, the forecast is really a random variable. So uh, when we talk about random variable, we talk about probabilities. So what you want in the forecast is really not to have a precise point of where you know you think that that, that future uh, that future event is going to be you know is going to exhibit, but basically an estimate. In other words, a range. Okay, so you have you have to break that uh, mindset that we're going to forecast 
a discrete point. It's going to be more a range, okay? And what we expect X to be is going to be, most of the time, it will be in the middle, okay, of that, of, of that range. So at least, you know, you have certain uncertainty that is common in forecasting, okay? So what you want is your model to make sure that the future events is going to be contained within those, those ranges, those estimate ranges. And then your model, you know, you can say that your model is, is a good model, you know, to, to forecast, okay? Because there's always going to be an uncertainty that in business, it translates to risk. Uncertainty for business is risk, okay? So for example, if I'm going to forecast the next uh, Christmas season, okay, the next Christmas season, and I have all this data from, you know, from 20 years, uh, you know, uh, past. So I, maybe I can get a, a good forecast, but that forecast was always going to be a range, okay? Because I cannot predict that that's going to be an exact number. That's foolish. <laughs> you know, it, that won't work. That won't work because you're going to miss it. Okay, but you say, okay, according to this data and according to what we're going to be monitoring within that year, because there could be some events that, you know, derail, you know, your forecast, then we're going to monitor that. But right now, this is the best estimate that I can give you. Okay, that range of, of, of values. Okay. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it's fun because you see those, predic the, those predictions and they have a band of risk yeah. Oh, yeah. They, 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 yeah. and you say okay that yeah, you, you you gave me a prediction i have like uh, th this range but you know i cannot i, I can just speculate on, on it yeah you you have to move your decision making has to move within this that range okay that that's what the forecaster is trying to tell you in other words you know there's going to be some uncertainty there's going to be a low point there's going to be a high point and we expect that within range, this going to be, you know, the prediction is going to be there. Okay, that's what we uh, that, that That's what we can do. I mean, <laughs> there's no other way, you know, to, 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 you know, to, to address it. Okay, because if you say, okay, I know that exactly you're going to sell, you know, uh, 112 million point six five 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 five. That that's meaningless. It's meaningless because you know that's not going to be the number. <laughs> Repeat period. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my experience, for yeah. example, uh, was in pension. So uh -huh. we were dealing with uh, pension funds for some banks for for major right. banks, you know, and then um, they have many uh, branches, and so <laughs> we estimated this this pension fund the the and we we forecasted. Till the end of each employee, um, uh, the, the, to, to give the, the bank the opportunity to save the right amount of money mm -hmm. uh, and, and be uh, able to repay the employee when they go to pension. Right, right. So, you know, you can give a band. You can say you can do up to some a certain point and you cannot go down to another point, but they right. want more because they need the money. They need to invest the, the, the rest of the money they can spend within that year. So <laughs> you need to be very precise and you need to be very tight. So that, that, that would be like a, a competition within uh, who releases the best uh, uh, the best prediction, and they may Correct. choose those ones who give uh, um, a lower to pay, right? For, for that year, if they want to spend more on other things, so it's it's all strategy, and obviously there's many other things to 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 consider that just you know a larger a, a band. Because you you have like COVID nineteen gave us um, a huge lesson. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So yep. we are playing with life of, of the people, 
and we are estimating how many people can die because of this virus. So, and you are forecasting a number and say tomorrow or within a week, we'll have uh, a thousand more deaths. Okay, mm -hmm. so we need to uh, establish a measure that will prevent this, this number because we have estimated this number. Right. Yeah. So you can be precise if you know what we are talking about, but there is always a range you are dealing with. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. the, the, the in, in forecasting, that, that is inescapable. Okay. That is inescapable because, you know, there are so many factors that probably they're not considered, uh, you know, when you make the forecast, that is, you know, some, some, something that is going to be there always. It's like the, you know, predicting the trajectory of a storm. You know, you always have this cone, what, is, what they call this cone of uncertainty, right? Because depending on certain factors that are not very, uh, they're very hard to, you know, to measure, then they have to accommodate, okay? If, you know, if this happens, okay, we, we think that the storm is going to move to the, to the left. If this other happens, then it's going to move to the right, but this is the mean, this is the average. In other words, this is what we expect, uh, you know, things to, to, to occur. Well, so another same thing. thing. Yeah. And another thing, another thing and, uh, that's interesting, and uh, from the example that uh, Federica shared, mm -hmm. is that in many times, COVID cases, for example, we are building forecasts, the people, our experts are building forecasts out of old data, right, of lagging right. data. So for example, in the case of, of COVID, you're building a, 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 today, you're building a forecast of how many people are died based on what you know, how many people died, but those data are from two, day, two weeks ago, for example, because that's when they can collect it, or maybe three days ago, et cetera, et cetera. So these are all data that, uh, you know, so, it's already an imperfect, in that sense, it's already, if you're using lagging data, you're already using imperfect Correct. information in order to build, uh, make future uh, predictions. Like it, it, I was talking about GDP, at the, for example, at the beginning, like the GDP, like in, in financial markets, the two things that people always try to uh, forecast are GDP growth and inflation, right? Uh, but GDP is only, the, the, the official figures are only uh, released once a quarter, right? So during those three months, you're using either old data or trying to build some sort of model to figure out what that print is going to right. be in the end. And getting it right is incredibly difficult despite all the forecasting models are out there and despite that we all know what is going into all these because all those numbers are lagging. There's all what we have is all old data because you know, the economy is dynamic. It's happening right now. It's not happening two, three weeks ago. So um, same with inflation. So those are those are interesting things. That's always an interesting, a very interesting point, Federica. So yeah, I guess that's that's why uh, there's always this idea of, of whether we should be forecasting or now casting, right? If we should try to use those forecasting methods to the term. So, right, right. Yeah. But it's uh yeah, it's an interesting discussion. So yeah. Okay, so it's almost uh three o'clock. Uh, mm -hmm. Andres, you know, thank you for the exposition. And um yeah. before we go, uh let me suggest some of the exercises. I mean, we're not going to do it, everyone, but let's concentrate on exercise uh nine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you have the book, Andres. Can you I help me exercise yeah. in section two? Exercise. Yeah, uh, number nine, yeah. Right here. Right there, okay. Okay, so uh, this one is, you know, exercise to familiarize uh, with the seasonal plots, subseries, lags, uh, autocorrelations, uh, uh, features. For a different kind, different kind of uh, of data sets that come with that package FPP3. So what I suggest is uh, just take one or two. Okay, you don't have to do them all. Just take one or two. Okay, let's say that uh, 
uh, Federica, maybe, uh, you know, you are motivated to do uh, uh, Australia production, okay? Australia production and, and hair, you know, for example. Then with those plots, uh, you're going to have to answer those questions, okay? In terms of the seasonality, what, what do you see? What patterns do you see in the series? Is this any seasonal pattern? Can you identify unusual, you know, uh, unusual events, etc. Okay, I think that's. In fact, when we did this, you know, we got a lot from, uh, you know, get, get, getting to, to do the plots first, and then try to answer uh, those questions. Okay, Good. so uh, let's do that. That just exercise nine and just choose two. You know, I mean, if you have time to do them all, you know, hey, that'd be my guess. But at least two, try to hone on in two and getting ready so you can, you know, give us your, your insight. And maybe, uh, let's say that Andres and, and Abdul, Andres and Abdul chose the same one. So I want to see the differences, okay, in terms of the interpretation, because that's very, that, that's very interesting, okay? Because probably you are seeing the same plot, but you are seeing something different <laughs> within, within that, that same plot, okay? So that, that would be also very, very, very insightful in terms of you know, the, the different aspects that you are uh, seeing that maybe uh, the other person is not, it is not aware of. Yeah, thank you, yes. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like, so, a, sounds like a good plan. Let me ask you a question, maybe you know this, uh, Ricardo, but yeah. auto, auto plot, right? Yes. Is it, a, is it just a wrapper for GG plot? Yeah. It's a wrapper it's for GG plot. Wrapper. It's just That's a wrapper, correct. okay, okay. Yeah, so you can, so, you can, so you can modify. GG so yeah, you can modify, for example, okay. you can add themes, you can add titles, you can add, you know, all kinds of things. Yeah, but okay. it's a, it's a, it's a wrap. Yeah, okay. you're correct. Got it. Yes. Okay, I was, yeah, good. Okay, excellent. Well, okay, so, uh, so we have yeah, a long well, break, no? Uh, yeah, it's going to be three weeks. Okay, but I, I hope that, you know, you get recharged, you know, have a great time with your family, uh, Christmas and New Year's and, you know, Epiphany, uh, the, the, three, the Three Kings. And we'll see you then. Yeah, we'll see you then on the, on, on the 13th. Okay, Wonderful. you know, to discuss, do you have ample time, you know, to, to do the exercise and then, you know, let's, let's you know, let, let, let's just get, let's get a read, right? Let's get a read, you know, see the plots, you know, what, what uh, situations do you do you uh, you know uh, uh, see that you know it was kind of you know challenging because some of these some of these data sets are not very uh, you know very clean <laughs> okay uh, I can give you that insight they're not very mm -hmm. clean sometimes they're missing values and all that and you have to you know kind of uh, figure it out how you're going to do this plot okay yeah. <laughs> makes sense fantastic all right. Well, it's good to so, see you guys. And, yeah. uh, wish you a very, very happy holidays and a very happy new year. And uh, and we'll see you uh, next year. This year some 13. exercise and forecasting. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. It was, it was really nice uh, and a good presentation. Oh, learned a lot. Right. Yeah, learned a lot. Okay. Great. So take care. Happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays. Bye. Bye.